Hey guys, I hope you're doing great. I don't know if I ever told you, but before YouTube, I built and sold DIY FPV racing drones. If you don't know what that is, just wait for it. So I was working with a lot of different type of quadcopters, some really big ones that could carry a lot of weight, and of course these small FPV racing quadcopters that can fly really fast, close to trees, you are in full control. Now, actually, we, we would crash most of the times. But it is a lot of fun nonetheless. What we are doing today is building a FPV racing drone using 3D printed parts. This is the Peon 230. I printed all the parts using PLA plastic, which I know is not the strongest stuff on earth, but we'll have to try it. Okay, if the PLA doesn't work, we could try this PTG filament that should be more tough and resilient to crashes. Here we go, 3D printed FPV racing drone build. Let's do it. Here is the frame, looks very nice. Let's do the electronics. Hey, if you ever been wondering what the inside of a drone racer looks like, you know, here you go. You got the internal organs, you got the brain, you got the heart, you got the muscles, you got the eyes, you know, pretty accurate. Before I screw everything together and put on the top plate, let me show you and let me give you an explanation to someone who has never seen a drone before and give you a better understanding of how something like this functions because it's really cool. A quadcopter has four motors. Yeah, that's kind of obvious. Each motor has its own individual EEC that controls the speed of the motor by adjusting its RPMs. And the electric speed controller is connected to a PDB that distributes the power from something like a battery and so giving power to all the motors. Now here comes the really interesting part. For the speed controllers to know what RPM to run the motor at in order to keep level flight, we need a flight controller, which basically is the brain inside a drone. The flight controller is the component that knows whether the drone is upside down or at a certain angle, and by knowing this, it notifies each individual EC to regulate the RPMs of each motor to keep the drone stable. There is a system completely separate from this called a FPV system. You have seen it on the DJI Mavic, you hook up your phone and you get a live video feed from the camera on the drone into your phone. And that was a nice rhyme. We do the exact same thing. We have a small CMOS camera connected to a video transmitter that transmits a video signal that my fancy goggles picks up and you can display the footage in uh, two monitors inside the goggles. This is the exact same setup, just in a bit more awkward format. So if I plug in the drone, you can see, well you should see. So here is a live video feed from this camera. So when you're flying, you can see where you're going. And, uh, and yeah, when you crash, it's very immersive. So for a moment, it feels like you're gonna die. Very exciting. I still have no idea if this works. At this point, it could either work very nicely or 
blow up. But I'm pretty confident. Here we go. That totally worked. Minus the crash. We are on our way to my all time favorite location for racing. It's beautiful, you'll see it. We'll start off with a three cell battery and uh, once we feel more comfortable I'll swap over to the four cell battery. That should give us a lot more punch. The GoPro recording, this is what I will see through the goggles and this is the GoPro. Big difference. Okay, just first impression, it feels just like the real thing. Like, I, I can't feel a difference from the plastic frame and the carbon fiber frame. If I would describe with just one word the feeling of flying this, it would, it would be surfing. Like, it feels like you are floating in the air, just avoiding trees. Like, it's actually really relaxing. That's just insanely awesome. Like, the feeling, you couldn't describe it. It feels just like being in, in something like a helicopter floating through the air and you can fly anywhere. But the fear of actually crashing, I mean, it does add a certain spice to it. Awesome. Three cell, three cell fine. With the GoPro and a 2200 three cell, it's on the heavier side. Now swapping over to a 1400 four cell will make this go fast as f Interesting. I was just about to take off with the new four cell battery when I noticed these vibrations in the arms, like severe vibrations that I didn't have for sure. I'm confident I didn't have it before. This is something that happened after the first flight. Right away I was thinking like, okay, it gotta be the bolts on the bottom. So I tightened everything and, and that wasn't it. So I started like feeling the arms and I could tell right away that these arms that has been on the quadcopter is way more flexible than a new printed, never used arm, which is very interesting because I can't see any physical damage or deformation on the arms. So, so just by instinct, I feel it could have something to do with the infill. Inside the arms, I have 30% infill, which means it's basically 70% air. And what I think, since PLA is kind of brittle, it could be that the infill has cracked. It's, it, it's basically disconnected from the perimeters of the arm, so it acts like there is no infill. That's non-verified information. The next day. Okay. Turns out it didn't have anything to do with the infill. Okay, here's what happened. I made a new set of arms, five perimeters, 100% infill. I was confident, like there is no way, I was, for sure, there, there's no way this is not gonna work. Still with the same mindset that the infill was the problem, 
I went the opposite way and made an arm with three perimeters and just 20% infill. Yeah, I didn't even bother testing those. I made sure the propellers were balanced, everything was okay, it was just these weird vibrations from nowhere. And what it turned out to be was actually when I printed the bottom plate specifically, the corners, even though, I mean, it, it's pretty long, it's a pretty long piece, the corners, even though it's PLA, would warp slightly. And even though this is not like affected on the arms in the front, in the back you can see it's connected right to the end of that plate and the warped corners would actually give the arms enough room to shake, to, to flex, to wiggle. Anyway, I thought it was pretty interesting and how I fixed it was by adding two millimeter carbon strips on the bottom of the arms. I just super glued them to the bottom arms and uh, reinforcing that connection between the arms and the body. And now it feels super solid, it flies a lot better, so that's something to keep in mind. But now we are back in business, a four cell is coming up, so let's do it. That's a crash. <laughs> that was pretty gnarly too. Oh man, let's go and check it out. I am so happy that didn't go straight into a tree, but that impact had weight behind it. Like the impact actually, I could hear it. I did actually crash one time earlier. I uh, never got it recorded, uh, but I actually broke the GoPro mount. But luckily I printed a few spare ones, so it wasn't very bad. Okay, here we go. Okay, so it actually looks fine. The GoPro, where's the GoPro? Oh, here's the battery. Where is the GoPro? The GoPro ripped itself out of the uh, earbuds. So where is the GoPro? I can imagine that rolled quite a distance Oh here it is and it's still recording Found the GoPro and it is still recording which is awesome and I don't know why I'm going over here So obviously we broke the GoPro mount we also broke one propeller but the frame itself looks intact which kind of surprises me okay that's pretty impressive awesome so we'll definitely have to do a part two maybe testing different materials to see which one holds up the best uh, but I just want to say thank you to everyone who watches till the end uh, it means a lot to me and uh, yeah don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more have an awesome day bye <laughs>